Hyder. What's up, Eagles Nation? What's going on, NFL World? How you doing, Division Rivals? This is Stephen Hyder with Gate City Sports Channel. Sports Channel, where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. All right, y'all, today's topic. Look, yesterday, following practice, man, the Philadelphia Eagles made some signings, guys, and uh, I think they're, they're worth going over. Now, I'm going to say right from the start, you guys know I'm going to be a little excited about Obi Melifonwu, but it, at this point, you know, kind of, at this point, coming into camp, man, I mean, these guys are all going to be a little bit of long shots, but to begin with, Obi Melifonwu just, there's something about the physical makeup of Obi Melifonwu that makes you hope a guy like that can just beat the odds. Right. Kemp on the run, has a man open, Melifonwu! Right, I mean, this is a big guy, 6'4", over 220 pounds, man. Uh, I can tell you in college, he primarily played as a strong, he's got He's got experience playing a strong and a free. This is a very aggressive run filler. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, one thing that I remember about him was is that he was like uh, top 20 in stops in, when he was in college, where he was rated as a top 20 uh, safety when it came to, to, to run fill. The other thing about him, guys, is like I said, when it comes to being aggressive. So when you're you're playing an aggressive style, that can lead to over pursuits and being uh, so aggressive that, that you create lanes to open because you, you're not playing necessarily the responsibility. You're you're trying to get there as quickly as you can and make a big play. Second down, a designed run for Greg Ward, who takes a big hit. So, Obi Melifonwu, you know, former second round pick, guys. He's hung around a few teams. I believe he was with the, the Raiders, and then he was with the Patriots, and then uh, the 49ers signed him and then kind of cut him, and then he, that's why he's available now. He's a guy that, you know, like I said, I was a big fan of his brother, Ifiatu Melifonwu, who came out of this year's draft from Syracuse. Obi played at UConn. Obi's a very athletically gifted guy, man. I mean, he's, like I said, 6'4", 220-some pounds. He ran like a 4'4", Like, this dude is very athletic, guys. Like, how about this? Jump, guys. Look hey, at his reaction. You just jumped 44 inches. What? He's a guy that I, I'm not sure if he's going to make the roster. It seems like a long shot at this point. I'm going to be honest, guys. But I wouldn't be shocked if he doesn't make a few plays and make everybody goes kind of like, whoa, like, who is this dude? So we'll see, man. I mean, you never really know. You're always, always... Like I said, man, you're always one injury or, or, or really one play away from going from having basically no shot to being elevated, you know, to to the practice or being elevated onto the roster or onto the practice squad or whatever. Uh, the other, the other kind of signing that happened here, man, this is no mystery, just because of how how much we've been struggling in camp with keeping receivers healthy. You know, it all started with Trayvon Grimes basically losing out on his opportunity to be here because of an injury. Uh, past that, man, you know, we just had a rough start to camp. You know, Quez Watkins hasn't been on the field yet because of a failed physical that uh, I'm sure that it was more of an administrative issue here, and, and they're trying to work through it. And then, you know, Jalen Rager had a death to someone that was really close to him, we learned, and then he also had some lower body tightness that caused him to fail his physical, but he has been getting back out onto the field. So clearly he's cleared that, you know, failing the – it was a conditioning test, not a, a physical, but he's clearly cleared that hurdle and he's back on the field, but – you know, that there was some offsetting to that, guys. Greg Ward Jr. hasn't been quite right for camp. Like, So the Eagles went out and they signed Andre Patton. Hey, man. Newcastle County up in the house, man. We got the kid's a local kid, man. He's from Wilmington, Delaware. He went to college with the Rutgers. Big guy, man. He's, he's like a 6'3", 6'4", receiver, guys. Uh, this is your prototypical kind of like boundary side. I mean, he's got some flexibility where he can play as a big, tall slot. He can play boundary side. He could play the flanker if you want him to, but to me, he's more of boundary. Um, you can see that reflect in his college numbers, guys. If you go take a look at his college numbers, it kind of plays its way out. So deep balls over 20 yards. He was targeted four times in 2016 at Rutgers. Um, medium, so between 10 to 19 yards, he had 17 targets there. Short, 0 to 9 yards, he had 23 targets. So if you break it down then by the depths to the corners of, of where he's being targeted, uh, look, he had eight targets on eight receptions for the intermediate left, guys, boundary side, right? Uh, if you look at the deep left, he had 12 targets, only two receptions. So uh, we can talk about, the, I don't know that he's the greatest downfield target, but that definitely the intermediate game, it's there. And then his you know, short left, guys, nine targets, six receptions. 
Uh, compare that to the, you know, to the deep left, he only had, or, I'm sorry, to the deep right, I should say. He didn't have any targets on the deep right. Intermediate right, he only had one target. And then on the short right, he had two targets. So you can see he didn't play as much flanker as he did boundary side guys, just from his, his college numbers here, guys. Um, can't body. Uh, you know, look, I'd love for a guy like this to come in and, and start showing. You know, because outside of Travis Fulgham, outside of J.J. Ortega Whiteside, Jamana Osborne, we don't have a lot of guys with this type of frame. You know, so, I mean, we'll see. I mean, you know, it's it's always going to be a long shot at this point in camp, guys. So I don't really know what to make of that. I, you know, I wouldn't get too overhyped, but it's good to see a local kid. You know, this is a guy that grew up like five miles down the street where I grew up at. So, I mean, you know, it's always fun to see a local guy kind of kind of come up. You know what I mean? Like a guy that came out of Rutgers, even though I'm an NC State guy. Obviously, I'm very familiar with Rutgers. So, interesting, right? The uh, other news that happened is that the Eagles have worked out free agent defensive tackle uh, Daylon Mack. Mm, I wouldn't put too much into this one, guys. I mean, the guy's been on, like, I don't know, 25 teams. I'm joking, but he has been on a lot of teams, guys, since since he's been in the league. He's having a hard time sticking on rosters. Um, I'm, I'm a little, I guess maybe because, you know, early on going in, people were kind of projecting that the depth at defensive tackle is going to be a little deeper than it was because Milton Williams was kind of thought to be that defensive tackle, even though I showed hesitancy towards that. And I told you guys that, you know, this is really a five technique. And that's where he started his college career. He only played as a three technique last year because of issues with COVID and people opting out and then the reduction in scholarships or players that were, you know what I mean? Like it basically caused the coaching staff there to ask him if he would bounce inside. And he did. Now, I do think that, you know, a kid like Milton Williams gives you some flexibility because obviously you can play him inside and you can play him outside. But, you know, I, I guess that depth wasn't quite as as great as maybe it looked at one point. So now we're, we're seeing the Eagles kind of react to that with a guy like Daylon Mack. As far as I know, guys, they have not signed Daylon Mack. It was just him being worked out. But we'll see, guys. I mean, we'll definitely see as things kind of shake their way out, right? I mean, there was a lot of wheeling and dealing here, a lot of movement of players, uh, a lot of stuff going on following, you know, practice. So, and uh, a lot of stuff going down, guys. That's all I can really say. All right, y'all. I appreciate y'all tuning in, man. I'll make you guys another video probably later today after we see some camp stuff. I'll do some camp notes. I'm also going to be live. So uh, just pay attention, guys. I'm going to post where I'll be live at. I'm not going to be on my channel. I'm going to be on another person's channel. So, you know, look for that, man. I'll be uh, linking up with Eagles Uncensored, guys. All right, y'all. I appreciate y'all's time and attention. I'll see y'all in the next video.